the scripture this morning is Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. That's in the Red Bible, the second page, 34. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no, no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Our second reading is Psalms 43, verse 3 and 4, and that's page 634, the first 634 you come to. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of the God, to God my exceeding joy. I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God. Amen. Thank you, Neil. So the parable of the bridesmaids. The parable of the bridesmaids. That last week we talked a little bit about a wedding as well. We talked about the rich landowner, possibly the king. And the, the story of this parable begins and it says, it was just the previous chapter. If you still have your Bibles open, you can see that. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like... And then Jesus tells the parable. I explained to each of you last week, and I want to reiterate this again. It's very important that in the parables and, and in the Bible that you draw your conclusions. Some of you may or may not know, but I have, I have an agenda when I read the Bible, whether I like it or not. I bring all of me and all of my past and all of my relationship with Jesus into every scripture I read. I can't not bring it. And you do the same. The Holy Spirit speaks to us and through us in different ways. And these are stories. They are made up stories by Jesus. They are parables that help us maybe relate and understand what's happening. And he says here, the kingdom of God is like the ten bridesmaids. Now, I want to set the scene for you, explain a little bit about it, kind of like I did last week. And then when we get done, we're going to have a candlelight ceremony that I think you'll find both enjoyable and fascinating. But it's like every other worship experience that you come into. The more you bring into this, the more you will get out of this. My prayer is that each time we come for worship, that you are expecting. Not just expecting Jesus to come back, but expecting the Holy Spirit to touch you. How many of you have sat on the front porch and watched the sunrise and felt something move deep inside of you? Do you know that people have moments with God in an ordinary, everyday sunrise? 
do you know that you can come to worship and you can have deep, moving, meaningful things happen when the Holy Spirit shows up? Today, the bridegroom the bridegroom. So we, we, we talked a little bit about this wedding feast last week and there was there was wedding or choir robes here that we talked about could could represent that traditional ceremonial garb that you would have to put on in order to come to the wedding feast. And and there was the wedding dress. We all know that's required in our custom, isn't it? But this bridegroom things and the oil in their lamps. Did you hear the story? The story is that they that, that that when the bridegroom came, there were five when when the groom or the person that the groom sent comes, there were five ladies who did not bring enough oil to get them through whatever this amount of time of waiting was. And so they went to buy some in the morning hours. And when they came back, the other five were gone. I'll tell you a little bit about it. The, 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 the man and the women last week we talked about if they were to be married, this wasn't like we do around here where you go to high school together or you meet each other online and then, and you know, then you get excited about each other and there's a couple of first dates and then you move in or, or then you get married, right? That's not how it went back then. Back then, mom and dad picks out who you're going to marry. They get together. They arrange. They have an arrangement whether it was sealed with a handshake or sealed with a contract or sealed with the, with the stamp of, of wax on, on an insignia. Well, however it was, maybe it was sealed by passing back and forth or, or giving payment. And then the man goes to his house, his parents' house. The woman goes to her parents' house and they are officially betrothed. They are, they are actually married. But they can't live together because there's no place for them to live. So the man goes back to his parents' house and almost always, not every time, but almost always, there would then be this, this building of a house often on the men's property. How many of you are farmers and have your children uh, built houses on your land? That happens. It does, doesn't it? You guys look at me like I'm talking nonsense this morning. Are you all still with me? Okay. So the, 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 the groom then would begin to build this house and get everything ready. And then there would become the moment when everything is ready. He would send a servant or someone to say, we're very, very close now. Get ready because I will be coming to get my bride. Now, there would be a special group of women selected to be with her, to get her ready, to, to cover her in oil so she smelled amazing, to do all of this stuff. And we do that now, only they call it Bridezilla. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, have we twisted things up, haven't we? I mean, this doesn't look anything like it does then, but it does. It, it looks a lot like it does. And, and, and you guys, th th this is... This is all subject to some, some historical background. Not exactly, it, it, lots of people did it a little bit different. Lots of cultures did it a little bit different. Anyways, as they prepare, the story that Jesus is telling us is that these ladies are waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and that five of them brought extra oil to fill their lamps and five of them did not. Last week, the story said that he brought everybody to the, or invited everybody to the wedding feast, and very few came. Matter of fact, none did to start with. So he went out and sent his servants out. He sent his church out to personally invite people. And they came, and they came, and they came, and they filled the place. And this, this wedding feast would have went on, this, this party would have went on for possibly a week this was not a one evening event where if, if the bride doesn't get here soon, I'm leaving. And if they don't serve supper, wait, honey, 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 it's, it's 10 p.m. 
I think we should go. The music's starting to get too loud. Right? right? You, guys, you guys know the drill, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's not how it went. You were there for, for an extended amount of time, for days on end. But the, something happens. The king, the landowner, comes and spots one person who is not dressed in the ceremonial garb and he says to his servants to send him where there will be gnashing of teeth. <sighs> today's, today's parable is one that goes, it cuts deep into my theology. It's hard for me to figure this one out. You see, five of them, five of them are, have, have prepared well and they're ready and they are accepted and brought in to the ceremony. Five of them came unprepared. And it says that they go to the door and they knock and the landowner says, I don't know you. Now I've read my Bible a time or two and I, I can quote the scripture that says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock and whoever opens it, I will come in and sup with them. What is it? When is it that Jesus closes the door on us? Is that what this is saying? Is it saying that there's a point in time when if we haven't, if we haven't prepared ourselves that we're not going to get in? You guys, I don't know. The next story in this chapter is a story of the landowner who gives talents to his servants. That scripture reference is listed. It's, it's verse 14 through 30 in Matthew. It's listed in your bulletin for a reason. I want you to take that home and read that story. I want you to read it twice through, once for your mind and then once very slowly in prayer for your heart. You see, we have to let God speak to us in these stories. There's a warning in Mark that says the parables and the word of God that people who do not believe in Christ will not understand it. How many of my friends, how many of my church folks, how many of them are only prepared on Sunday morning? How many of them are only willing to wear the sign I'm expecting soon on Sunday morning? I mean, you know, I'm thinking about having those signs uh, ordered in a four by eight sheet and we'll stick them in the yards. I just, any volunteers to have that out in your front yard? Praise God. I'm expecting soon. You want those in blue or pink? <laughs> I mean, what is it that when we're expecting a child, don't we do crazy stuff? I mean, you know, you got to get the room ready. And there's this big reveal about whether it's a boy or it's a girl, you know. And, and, and nowadays you can find out ahead of time. And it used to be some people, they don't, they don't want to tell anybody ahead of time. You know why? Because they don't want all the clothes to start showing up until, you know. <laughs> because grandmas and grandpas go crazy. Right? And then there's picking the name. And then, you know, if you're expecting twins or triplets, you better order your stroller online now because they're hard to come by. Those three, 
Do you, do you see how much we put into things? This expecting, how it, it looks different, and yet in our Christian life, how much do we pour into this expectation that Jesus is coming back? How much action do we give it? I know that the Bible says, for by grace. For by faith are you saved through Christ. See, it's the belief in Christ that saves you. Then why is the door not open? I'm not going to give you my answer. I'm not going to tell you what I think or even how I feel about that. Because the Holy Spirit has to work in you. Right now we're going to have a candlelight service. And I want to invite the fellows to go ahead and shut all the lights off. And those who are doing our candlelight service to go ahead and come up. I want you to take a time of reflection and prayer. This is your moment to talk to God. Listen to the words. See the flame as it's lit and as it's extinguished. Hear the things that stick out and pray about them.
oh God, allow us to be your people. Allow us to be those who come prepared, those who are constantly expecting. Oh Lord, allow us to feel your love and your grace. Oh God, allow us to be prepared as a church to love people who come in the doors, to love people who can't make it in the doors, and to love those who have never considered these doors. Oh Lord, help us care. Care for each other and care for the lost. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Okay, I'd invite you all to stand. Our final song is a fun one.